The Learning Company presents Midnight Rescue, a Super Solvers reading adventure developed by The Learning Company and Sculptured Software. Copyright 1989. Press enter to start. The master of mischief, Morty Maxwell, wants to make Shady Glen School disappear by midnight. His plan is to use disappearing paint. He has turned five paintbrushes into robots and they are now his helpers. To avoid being caught, the Master of Mischief is hiding in one of the robots. You can save the school if you figure out which robot is really the Master of Mischief before midnight. Good luck! Enter your name in the box below! Let's see, I don't think I can fit all of Hair Monster in there. Hermans! Close enough. Hermans, as a trainee, you will see new user messages pop up from time to time. These will help you learn to play the game. You can turn them off from the menu bar F3 when you get into the game. Okay. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What do we do? What do we do? I shot it. New user message. The picture you have just taken will show you hidden facts about the robot. The picture has been placed in your notes. Enter to continue. Tab to move down to notes button. Press enter to see notes. So I've never played this before in my life, so this is this is all new to me. New user message. Your notes include a checklist followed by a clue card for each robot. Use enter to cycle through the cards. Compare the robot facts to the reading clues. Use the decide button when you know whether a robot is or is not the master of mischief. Okay. Let's see. Let's try clues. Buffo. Need this robot picture. Next card. Electro. Next card. Pogo. I just took a picture of one of them. Yeah, there we go. Turbo. If you don't leave, I'll cry. So. Um. Pictures needed. Huh. Well, I don't really know what to do yet, so... Let's go back to the school. Whoa, this guy's angry. I don't like him. And you're annoying. You're super annoying with that noise. Try moving quickly and doing a flip over a robot by using up and left at the same time. Huh? Oh, okay. Auditorium. You'll need to find reading clues to win the game. Look for the triangle signs. At a triangle sign, press up to read for a clue. There's some stairs. Can I go up them? Sure can. What's this all about? Nothing. Can't read it. Whoa! Get. Oh. I'll hide from him in the principal's office. Oh, there's a triangle sign, right? New user message. Take your time. The clock is on pause while you are at while you are reading or looking at your notes. Use the page down. There's a clock. Okay, there is, down at the bottom right. I see it now. Use the page down button to move through the reading to the clue question. Okay, come see in here Jerry and Geraldo. An amazing ventriloquist act. One week only, August 7th through 14th, 7 p.m. Shady Glen Palace Theater. Jerry and his talking puppet Geraldo will surprise and entertain you. Two full hours of laughter, wonder, fun, wonder and enjoyment. No tricks or tape recorders are used in this act. Just Jerry's own voice speaking through Geraldo. See the amazing likeness of yada 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 yada. Make up tickets sold at all Shady G ticket stores or at the door. Jerry was really... Very good at making Geraldo's sounds. Name the thing he didn't use to throw his voice around. 
Well, it said he didn't use a tape recorder. That's right, you've collected the clue to help you win the game. Awesome. The reading clue you just found has been placed in your notes. When you want to see your clues, use tab. So, let's see what the note's all about. Okay. Well, I'm not ready to decide yet. I guess I'll just keep hunting down more stuff. Okay, okay, this guy's fast. But I got your picture. Check out the classroom. What do we got here? Shady Glen, March 3rd, 1988. The mayor of Shady Glen presented a special award to the members of the Super Solvers in honor of their solving what has come to be known as the case of the running refrigerator. The Super Solvers were brought in by the telephone company after numerous reports of prank telephone calls in all areas of Shady Glen. Most of the trick calls reported throughout Shady Glen were the old joke, hello, is your refrigerator running? Then you'd better catch it. The Super Solvers finally discovered a tape recorder that had been placed in a telephone booth and put on continuous playback. The machine would say the same message over and over. However, the person who was dialing the telephone was never found. So I'm curious as to what hard words is. Continuous. Keeps going, never stops. However. But on the other hand, though. Oh. Okay. The refrigerator was a running joke <laughs> that I like to play. It's true. Tell me which machine would speak, and then you'll have your clue. Which machine would speak? I think it was the tape recorder, right? No. The telephone? Damn it. That's incorrect. Do I get another shot? Yes, all right, that's correct, but haha, ha, you already have this clue. Yeah, I knew that. Why did you give me the same clue twice? Hey, there's a guitar. An A plus guitar. Do you need any more help playing the game? Not sure yet. Let's hide in the music room. Oh crap, he's in here too. Oh, he shot me to death! Oops, that robot got you with its trick. This cost you time on the clock. Great. Come to the reading circle at the Shady Glen Library, June 20th through August 7th, 1960, led by Ethel Morris, librarian. Kids, bring a favorite book from home or check, check out one from your library, then curl up with your book in our morning reading circle from 9 to 10 a.m. Parents, join Miss Morris in the reading area for a look at the latest bestsellers. No food, drinks, loud talking, or shooting of rubber bands, please. Anyone not following these simple rules will be quietly asked to leave. Sign up today and enjoy a good book. Miss Morris had her special rules. There were really just a few. And if you didn't follow them, what would she make you do? Leave. That's correct! You have collected a clue to help you win the game. Nice. And... Whoa. Oh, that refills my... <laughs> that refills my camera. He just bumped into a wall. Okay. I do have a timer going, so it should probably just keep going. Ah, the library. <laughs> Book title, The Strangest Pet on Kickapoo Street. Kickapoo? Huh. 
Chapter 5, Unwanted Guests. The fifth evening that Uncle Rick was in the house, Jamie decided she couldn't stand to have him stay for two more weeks. She had guessed that after four days, her mother was tired of having him there, too. Then she had an idea. She hid her pet spider under the covers of Uncle Rick's bed while he was in the bathroom washing his face. Boy, did he scream when he pulled back the covers. Jamie's suspicions about her mother's feelings were right. She didn't get mad at Jamie. Instead, she laughed and said to Uncle Rick, Oh, I guess there's still a nest of those spiders under the house. Uncle Rick scurried to get his suitcase packed. He was gone within the hour. Hasta la vista, Uncle Rick. This is a story I really enjoy. Mother's actions are quite a surprise. What does she want Uncle Rick to do right before her very eyes? She wants him to leave. But I've already gotten that Clue. Don't you be smiling at me, evil mad scientist dude. Ooh, drama club. June 20th, 1960. Dear Diary, after months of hinting my wishes coming true, I've been telling Dad that the Stewarts had a new baby last month. And now there's just not enough space in the dollhouse for their whole family. They need a new room desperately. Dad got the hint and is building a new nursery onto the dollhouse. I promise to help him paint and decorate it so it will look really pretty, but only if Terry leaves us alone. Little brothers and paintbrushes just don't mix. The Stewarts are happy about the new room, but Mr. Stewart told me to tell Dad to use his hammer only during the day since the new baby needs his sleep at night and awakens easily. I can't wait for my... I can't wait to have my friends over for open house sign Betsy. Betsy had a new baby doll. He needed lots of sleep. What could, he, what could not be used at night so he would not make a peep? A hammer. And I have a new clue. Let's check the clues out. Buffo, Electro, Pogo, Rolo, Turbo. Clues! <clears throat> so I got three out of four clues for this dude. I'm guessing when we, when I get the clue number two there, I'll find out whether or not this is the master of mischief. Next card. Need this robot picture. You seem upset. Am I a pest? All right. Let's just keep going and see what's next. Hello, Abe Lincoln. Hang on, I want to try to... Jumped right over him. Ah. Damn it! I've only got until midnight. Haven't I been to the auditorium already? Oh, if you give me the same clue again... Sunshine Boy Stops Beach Trip, Shady Glen School Press, May 17, 1959. Last week, Mrs. Simpson's class voted to go to Shady Glen Beach. Only one person objected. That was Morty Maxwell. He didn't want to go to the beach. He wanted the class to go to the amusement park at night. There's too much light at the beach, complained Morty. It's not good for my magic, and going on the rides would be more fun than just sitting in the sand anyways. When everyone in the classroom laughed at him, he put on his sunglasses and became very quiet. During the afternoon recess, the picture of the beach disappeared from the wall behind Mrs. Simpson's desk. In its place, someone had hung a poster of a big moon and stars and a roller coaster. At the bottom of the poster said, Magic and fun happen out of the sun. Ain't that the truth? I can't do magic in the sun. That's why I like the night. Your clue is what I like to wear because I hate the light. Sunglasses. Collected another clue. So that's my fourth clue. Does this robot picture match all four clues? Oh. He's got a tape recorder, a hammer, sunglasses. I don't know about a leave. Nope, it's not that dude. 
That one's got a hammer, but no tape recorder. Turbo. Buffo. Well, it's either Buffo or Turbo, because they both have tape recorders. I don't know what leave means, though. If you, oh, if you don't leave, I'll cry. Oh, oh, it's this one. Is Turbo the one? Yes. Are you sure you want to accuse Turbo of being the master of mischief? Yes, I do. I accuse you of being the master of mischief. I'm not the one this time. Crap. Did I just lose the game? Yes. <laughs> I think I just lost. The school has disappeared. No points will be added to your lifetime score and your rank will not change. Do you or someone else want to play again? You know, I think I do. Can I play as myself again? One moment, robots at work. Press enter to continue. Ah, sweet. I can try again. Okay. So, uh, there's no clue in here anymore. And it bumped into the wall. Let's see, am I on the ground floor? Find reading clues, look for the triangle signs. Yes, I, I knew that already. Oh, oh, who do we got here? Zap. I took your picture. Wait, who was that? Oh, here's another one. Zap. I took your picture too. So I'm thinking if I get all the pictures of the robots, I'll have a better chance. And this does seem to be the bottom floor, so... He's extra mad at me because I falsely accused him. Okay, we got another clue. Take your time. Yeah, yeah. I guess all the things happening in school lately are really getting to me. I had the strangest dream last night. When I woke up this morning, I really had to pinch myself. Not only did I dream about invisible paint, I dreamed that while I was sleeping, I got painted with it. I wanted to leap out of bed, but I didn't. I stayed to see what would happen. My toes began to disappear little by little. Then my feet, then my legs, until finally the top of my head was completely gone. You couldn't see the paint and you couldn't find me. I must say, being invisible could be a lot of fun, and practical too. It would make it possible for me to find Tommy Harrison's list of phone numbers and get Bobby Turner's number. Then I could call Bobby and ask him to go to the museum with me so we can work on our science reports. Signed, Becky. Okay. Becky had a silly dream. She began to fade away. Tell me what she wanted to do. Now that's the clue to say. Becky wanted to... Well, she wanted to pinch herself. Didn't she? Said when she woke up, she wanted to pinch herself. Well, I guess it's not that then. Paint? Wrong. I will hide the clue somewhere else, try to find it again. Well, I blew it that time. Do 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 do. From Mary Poppins Opens the Door by P.L. Travers. And don't forget to buy me an evening paper, said Mrs. Banks as she handed Jane two pennies and kissed her goodbye. Michael looked at his mother reproachfully. No. Next word. Next word. No, I want to know what re reproachfully means. Hard words. Come on. Smugly, I, can, I know what that is. Ah, whatever. <laughs> 
Is that all you're going to give us, he asked. What'll happen if we meet the ice cream man? Well, said Mrs. Banks reluctantly, here's another sixpence, but I do think you children get too many treats. I didn't have ices every day when I was a little girl. Michael looked at her curiously. He could not believe she had ever been a little girl. Mrs. George Banks in short skirts and her hair tied up with ribbons? Impossible. I suppose, he said, smugly. Doesn't smugly have two G's? Eh, I guess not. You didn't deserve them, and he tucked the sixpence into his pocket of his sailor suit. That was kind of mean. Michael could not believe his mother had been a girl. What did Michael think of her having in her hair among her curls? Ribbons. Yeah, uh huh? That's because I'm awesome. Okay. Wait a minute. There was still a triangle clue thing there. Oh, okay. No, I don't think I need any more help playing the game. I think I know what to do. Editorium. And there's still nothing in here. So, we're going upstairs. I love the way this guy walks. Like, yeah, I'm just looking for the clues. Oh, man. Should get a picture of that guy. And there's no clue in here. Wait, there's one. I just did this. Oh, okay. This is where the the guy rehid the clue. So, wait a minute. I have not read this yet. Michael was going to buy a paper, but he wanted a special treat. What did his mother give him so he could buy something to eat? Money. You have collected a clue to help you win the game. Let's check the clues. Look before you leap. Ribbon and money. Well, this guy's got money. And a ribbon in its hair. Next card. This guy has a fish and a butterfly. All right, then. Not enough clues yet. Let's keep going. Yeah. Techie Tech arrives. Shady Glen, May 4th, 1986. Soon it may be Shady Glen linking London as users of home computers are able to communicate and exchange... Information with other computer users. Tech a tech a tech a tech tech a tech tech a tech tech a tech. That's fun to say. A new computer information service is being set up to link computers almost everywhere in the world, and local users will be especially lucky because of the home office of Tech a Tech will be located right here in Shady Glen. Shady Glen users will not have to pay the extra charges for calls that all other users will have to pay. Tech a tech tech a tech tech a tech works on. Regular telephone lines, so no special setup is needed. Home computer users simply need a machine called a modem, which links the telephone and the computer. Tech Attack sounds like fun. Sure does. It'll be great to have it so near. Name an important thing I'd save by using this service here. Save money? You wouldn't save energy. And you wouldn't save stamps. I did already have that clue, and that whole question just seemed like a big advertisement for early internet. But I could be wrong. Ooh. While reading a comic book last night, I had this neat art idea. My light bulb went on, just like in the comics when someone gets an idea. I always liked cutting out pictures from magazines and pasting them together to create another picture. Yeah, I like doing that too. I've made some really interesting pictures, but what if you could use the pictures that were already cut out? 
What if pi the pictures were already sticky on the back like tape? Doesn't that sound like a cool idea? I think I'll look at my butterfly collection and draw my favorite one of the group. Next, I'll carefully cut out my drawing. Then I'll put tape on the back. Instant sticker. Everyone at school will want one, so I'd better get started. Diary. Love, Leslie. Leslie made the first sticker, an idea that would really pay. Tell me what it looked like, for that's the clue, I'd say. Pretty sure it's the butterfly. <clears throat> you have collected a clue to help you win the game. Let's check the music room. Ooh, there's two clues this time. The strangest dream. Oh, okay, this is the one I already read. You couldn't see the paint. Oh! Becky wanted to find the, the list of phone numbers. What? She wanted to leap? How was that it? Ah, oh, whatever. Wait, don't I have all four clues now? Sure do. Look before you leap. So this one's leaping. Has a ribbon. And money, but no butterfly. Electro. Should I just go roam around and find the other robots? This one has a ribbon, a butterfly, no money. Yeah, I think I need to find more more robots. Ah, there's one. Zap! Gotcha. So, who was that? Your notes include a checklist followed by a clue card for each robot. Use enter to cycle through the cards. Compare the robot facts to the reading clue. Okay, yeah, I already know what I'm doing here. So, it's not that one. Electro's the one I'm still missing. Rolo! Hey! Butterfly, yes. Ribbon in the hair, yes. Money and leap. I think this is our culprit. Is Rollo the one? What happens if you say maybe? Just kind of puts them under suspicion? I'm going to say Rollo's the one. Are you sure? Yes. I accuse you of being the master of mischief. Rats, you found me! Nice, that was kind of fun. Hermons. Total. Wow, you can get up to 500,000 points. I am a junior. Ha! <laughs> Your score and rank of... Do you want to play again? No, I think we'll call that good. That was kind of fun. For whatever random reason, I decided to just play this game. So, there you go. That was... Uh, yeah, one of those old learning company games. I guess until I see you next time, uh, I'm Hair Monster. Thanks for watching. I might do this kind of stuff again from time to time, just for the hell of it. Uh, yeah, catch you on the flip side.